Today we're talking about your inner ninja, the reformer, and arm jumping. Welcome to the Pilates Show, where we explore creative and innovative Pilates tips and techniques to help deepen the skill level of the movement educator while having fun. I'm your host, Jennifer Gianni, and today we'll be talking about your inner ninja, the reformer, and arm jumping. This is an amazing segue to the wall jumping that we did previously. So the reformer, what I just love about the reformer for all different sorts of populations and exercises is that it supports the body so well. Not just because of its kind of outer structure, but also the springs. So our body, our tissue, and our skeletal system is really like a spring. So when we're on the reformer, the spring talks to our body to gradually pulling apart and gradually coming back together. And the arm jumping is a really good instance of this. And so if your clients look kind of rigid when they're doing the wall jumping, or they're just not getting it, they're not getting that buoyancy and that kind of choreography through rib cage, scapula, humerus, into the forearm, wrist, and hand, then you definitely need the reformer and its springs. Now, in my hand mechanics workshop on the site, I do a lot of um, beginning exercises that help with this. There's a prone exercise that I do that you can check out. There's a seated exercise facing the bar and away from the bar. But today, I thought I'd give you some really fun things that you can do that um, bring the body into different trajectories and help to really open the hips and the pelvic floor while you're doing the arm jumping. And it also flosses, because we're gonna be coming up and down, so it flosses the whole system around our hips, spine, shoulders. So here we go, here's the first one. So make sure, the best is if you have a foot bar that's gonna lock in. And then we're just gonna use a yellow spring. So heels of the hands on the bar. And if you remember in our previous segments on your inner ninja, we talked about the example of a cat that has to really send his or her impulses into the floor to be able to leap with integrity, right? To stay organized and to have that kind of um, fascial flossing that we need, right? So here, same thing. It's a light spring, so you actually have to work a little bit harder to send your impulses into the bar. From here, you're just gonna keep your hips here and just explore, oh, what does this feel like, right? How can I gradually move out through my arms and gradually come back in? So my arms are like little shock absorbers. And this one is the, the simple one, right? So this one, we're trying to really stay organized in our torso as we move through the arms. Now to add on to this, as you jump away, right, you can lift up and then decelerate back in. So when I come in, right from the very beginning, I have to be communicating with the bar and pulling myself apart, right? So I have that elastic rebound and I'm sending, sending, sending my impulses into the bar in order to find that nice fluid lift and lower. Now to make it really fun for your more advanced clients, you can start to go side to side. And when we do this on the landing, it's really nice to drop the hip over the curvature of your heel. So you really get this beautiful side opening. So here we go. So you do that same first move. You're going out and then hands to one side of the bar as your sitting bone goes over that opposite curvature of the heel. And up and down. And resist. And resist. And I'm pressing down in my shins and tops of my feet. Good. So that gives you a few sample exercises that you can play with. 
check it out with your clients. See how the work on the reformer with the springs really teaching your tissues and the skeleton how to be buoyant. See if that helps them with the wall jumping. Stephen wrote in with a comment about our video, Good Postures for Labor. He has a client that's returned to him two months post from a C-section delivery. Now this is near and dear to my heart, and I wanted to take a few minutes to give you guys some tips of how to begin with your C-section client when they come back first couple of sessions, and this might extend, depending on the individual, for a little bit longer. Now, the lower belly tissue in my book, because of the spiral and the twist of the pelvic floor from the sacrum tailbone, is actually, in my mind, part of our back body. So a good way to address your C-section clients when they first come in is to talk to that back line of tissue. So really simple things you can do. You know, I'm sitting down right now, but it would be really nice to be standing up and having you know, the wall to balance with, with one hand. But get them rolling out their feet. Get some of the yummy um, foot release work that we have all over the site and in our practical release workshops. Give them some of that. It's so needed. Um, of course, using the spiky ball or the tennis ball. Another great way to help your clients is to have some feedback. So some weighted bean, bean bag little props. We love the smart spines. And stuff that you can also heat up. This is going to be really, really important for your post-pregnant clients and especially your C-section post-pregnant clients. So with this guy, I put this in the microwave. Simple, simple. Have them sit on it. Right? The stool can be a little bit higher. It doesn't have to be this low. Have them organize their sitting bones, get them comfortable, right? And just have them breathe down into the pelvic floor, down into the heat, dilating their pelvic floor muscles, and then a nice soft exhale, getting even heavier on the exhale. So it's really important that we start to talk to this massive amount of connective tissue in our pelvic floor and to actually help it to relax and organize. So the, the bean bag as well as the heat is going to help them find that. And this seems very, very simple, but this is going to go a long way to help them organize from their surgery and from their pregnancy and delivery. Last thing, this is really, really good for all of, again, your post-pregnant clients, but especially your C-section clients. So this is the smart spine cervical disc. I've heated it up in the microwave. I'm going to place it down here, and this is going to go under the pelvis. So of course, with your C-section clients, you're going to use the log rolling technique. So they're going to turn to their side and then use their arms, hands, and feet to guide them safely onto their back. So this little cervical disc, I want it to be right at the back of the pelvis. And depending on the individual posture, you might need less under the head, more under the head. You might need a little bit of support here at the lower back. And again, I want this heat and this little bean bag to help me organize all that connective tissue around the back of my pelvis and my sacrum. So they don't even have to put the hands onto the belly. The arms can be to the side or onto their chest. And then just doing a very simple little rocking back and forth, they can also go side to side. And you know what? The side to side is so, so important after abdominal surgery. Very, very gentle, right, so that they don't get too rigid in their pelvis and their femur heads, that they get, the, or they remind themselves of that little pivot again. And then from there, you can do this delicious circle. So you're connecting the arch and the curl and the side bend. And the cervical disc, right, is like a donut. So it guides you all the way around the circle. Use the log rolling technique to come up. Thanks for joining us. Please comment below or on Facebook or our Twitter page or comment in the forum on our site.